Hello? Join me in exploring the merge sort algorithm today. A gem among sorting techniques, merge sort masterfully breaks down lists and then seamlessly merges them in a sorted sequence. Rooted firmly in the pillars of computer science, it's both insightful and efficient. Let's embark on this journey. Join me in observing the merge sort animation. Merge sort functions by iteratively combining two pre-sorted sequences. In this animation, one sequence is highlighted in yellow, while the other is in red. Elements from both sequences are methodically merged into a green sorted sequence, which is twice as large. This process continues until the entire set is organized. The depicted animation showcases the top-down recursive approach of merge sort. However, there are other implementation variations. For example, some start by sorting sequences of length 2, then length 4, and so on, until they culminate in a single, fully sorted sequence. We currently possess two sequences, each with a length of 8, and we are merging them to form a final sequence of length 16. Once this is done, the entire sequence will be sorted. Merge sort is a divide and conquer algorithm that splits an array into two halves, sorts each half, and then merges them back together. In the merge sort function, we check if the left index is less than the right index, as a single item array is implicitly sorted. If this condition is true, we calculate the middle point of the array and recursively call merge sort on both the left and right halves. After both halves are sorted, the merge function combines them into a single array, merging the two sorted subarrays using the left, middle, and right indices. We want to combine two sorted lists into one sorted list. While there are many ways to achieve this, we'll focus on a traditional method using two helper lists. We use three pointers. Left starts at the beginning of the first list, middle points to the last element of the first list, and right at the end of the second list. To keep track, we note the number of items in the first list as n1 and in the second as n2. Next, we make two new lists, l for the first list's items and r for the seconds. At the end of both l and r, we add a special value called infinity as a marker. During our main merging process, for each step, we choose the smallest item from L or R and add it to our resulting list. Each time we pick an item, we move our pointer in that helper list forward. We continue this process until both L and R are left with only the infinity marker. It's worth noting that instead of the infinity marker, we could simply track our position in each list to know when we processed all items. Let's delve into the C++ implementation of merge sort. While there are numerous ways to implement this algorithm, we'll be focusing on its top-down approach. This variant is versatile, accommodating different types of sequences and allowing for custom sorting criteria. To merge two sorted sequences into one, we'll utilize functions from the standard library. The function works by determining the number of elements between the provided begin and end iterators. If there's only one element or none, it's already considered sorted and the function returns without doing anything. For larger sequences, the function calculates the middle point to split the sequence into two halves. It then recursively sorts each half. Once both halves are sorted, they are merged back together in the correct order. The function also allows for custom sorting logic. By default, it will sort elements in ascending order but you can provide your own comparison logic by passing a custom comparator function. Let's delve into the time complexity of the merge sort algorithm. This algorithm operates on a recursive principle. During each recursive step, it divides the sequence into two nearly equal halves, sorts each half recursively, and then merges them into a single sorted sequence. When visualized, this process can be represented as a tree often referred to as the call tree or recursion tree. In the first layer of this tree, we merge two half-length sequences. In the second, we merge four sequences, each a quarter in length, and this pattern continues. For each layer, merging operations take linear time, proportional to the number of elements in the sequence. 
So, how deep does this recursion go? The structure of the call tree closely resembles a complete binary tree. The journey from its root to any leaf represents successive recursive calls of the merge sort, having the sequence's length each time, until it reduces to a single element. This path length is equivalent to the base 2 logarithm of the total number of elements in the sequence. Consequently, the overall time complexity of the merge sort algorithm is n log n. Exploring the merge sort algorithm, we can identify several key advantages. Firstly, merge sort uses a divide and conquer strategy, effectively breaking down complex problems. It also stands out as a stable sorting method, ensuring consistency by maintaining the original sequence of equal elements. Furthermore, its performance is predictably consistent, operating within a time frame that can be described as n log n. For those working with extensive datasets that might exceed available memory, merge sort comes in handy, especially for external sorting. However, it's essential to be aware of some of its drawbacks. Merge sort tends to require more memory, which can be a limiting factor in certain applications. When dealing with smaller datasets, it might lag in speed, especially when compared to algorithms like quick sort. In the realm of coding, its implementation can pose more of a challenge, being somewhat more complex than simpler algorithms. And one more thing to note, merge sort isn't an in-place sorting method, meaning it will need extra storage space, roughly proportional to the dataset's size. Thank you for navigating the depths of merge sort alongside me. Your enthusiasm and thirst for understanding truly inspire. Got thoughts or queries? I'm here to listen. And if this exploration resonated with you, subscribing and sharing not only uplifts my efforts but also broadens the horizon of learning for others. Let's unite in making knowledge captivating.